What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we are going to talk about whether or not it's a good idea to move to Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, we're going to talk about everything from the pollution to the schools, to the urban sprawl, to the scorpions, to the crowds, to the lack of crowds, to the driving, to the crazy drivers. We're going to put it all into one here and put it for you right now at 2020, because Phoenix in the last even four or five years has changed quite a bit. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about some of the positives, too. It's not all bad. But in this video, we're going to try and weigh both sides. Also, uh, if you're thinking about moving to Phoenix, you may want to join our group. Uh, called Phoenix Metro Happenings. I just posted a link right there. Let me see if I can pin that. Oh, I can't. So I'll post it as the top comment uh, also at the top of this page. Uh, so if you're thinking about moving into Arizona, Phoenix, you can get other people's opinions besides my own, right? Uh, so let's talk about this. So there's a video out there that's getting a lot of views. And this guy says he used to live in Arizona, uh, uh, but he's got like top 10 reasons why not to move to Phoenix. And so um, in the video, he's, he goes over some things and, and then people watch this video and they're like, hey, Jeff, I heard the schools in Arizona suck. And I'm like, well, actually, yeah, it's, you know, it's been known for that. But is it really that bad? And how do you get around something like that? So uh, thanks to the 23 people who are tuning on in and the five people who already crushed up the likes. So let's get this video out there. And uh, also, if you guys are just tuning in. I did just post some videos on Sedona. You guys asked me to go up there. I made a couple of videos. I did a dr virtual driving tour, and then I did one where I just walk around. So there's two videos there and then one video on Payson. So you can go to the channel and see that right after this video. So some things to know about Phoenix just right off the top. Phoenix itself is 1.6 million people. It is the fifth largest city in all of America if you're just talking about the city, the incorporation of a city, because right next to it, you have Mesa, Scottsdale, Peoria, Glendale. Uh, then you have Tempe and you have Queen Creek and Gilbert and Chandler. But in the whole metropolitan area, we have about 4.73 million. You get a lot of different var varying uh, answers depending on who you ask about the actual size and there's some confusion. Some people say it's more, some people say it's less, but this is coming straight from the Census Bureau. Uh, and this is the most commonly, uh, this is the most common information, 4.73 million as of 2017. It's grown a lot. So we're approaching 5 million. So I would say you could probably say Phoenix Metro, 5 million people. Okay. And we all know that Maricopa County is the fastest growing city or fastest growing county in America, making, uh, being that Phoenix is the city that's inside of that, the Phoenix Metro area. You guys get the idea. You're talking the, one of the fastest growing places in all of America. So um, keep that in mind. You're, you're dealing with a lot of new transient people. Transient populations are people who come from other places and they end up here. So, yes, you do come across uh, locals. But for the most part, you're going to be uh, a lot of your neighbors, especially if you're moving into new homes. They're going to be transients just like you if you're coming from out of state, California, Illinois, uh, Massachusetts, depending on where uh, you're coming from. So some things that people don't like, like the things the guy mentioned in this video, he says the pollution, you know, the soot, the, the layer of smog that you can't help but see when you're coming in down uh, State Route 51 into Phoenix, uh, you just see this like layer of smog or whatever you want to call it, but it's like this brown layer that's just above the skyscrapers when you're coming in State Route 51. That's smog and, you know, it's probably not the safe, the cleanest thing to to inhale, but it's there and uh, people think it's dangerous and they don't like it and this and that. But one of the reasons why it's there is because of the, the, the amount of traffic and driving that we do here. We don't have a mass transit public or a, a very good public transportation system uh, like some of these other cities do, like BART, for example, in San Francisco or uh, like New York City has with the subway. So you get all that traffic driving and then you get the, the mountains that keep everything in, you know, the, the mountains kind of serve as a bowl and block all of that soot and pollution in that area. So that's kind of frustrating. Uh, another thing that he mentioned is the schools. So there's a very high, there's not, a, there's a, there's a teacher drain. We don't have as many teachers. So if you're a teacher, you're probably going to be in demand. And the thing is in the lower income areas, if you're moving to the lower income areas, the better teachers don't go there. So you, you have two factors going on, not enough teachers. And then all of the, the 
quote unquote, good teachers, the best teachers, the teachers with experience, they want more money. They go to places like Gilbert, Scottsdale or Chandler. So your kids, if you're moving into a place in the West Valley, say like um, Goodyear or Levine, you know, you're not going to have the, the, the same access to quality teachers. Thank you to the 17 people who crushed up the likes. I'm going to read up some of these real quick. I live in Santan, been here for a month, and the drivers are much better than Orange County in California. Okay, that's good to hear because that's one of the things that uh, was on this list. Uh, Kyle Bullender, no way. Arizona has the worst drivers. Yeah, okay, so you're getting contrary uh, reactions here. Jeff Rush, what's up, man? Uh, Chris Ritma, that's my opinion. Maybe I have been here long enough. Okay, he's saying maybe he hasn't been here long enough. Well, if you're here during the uh, – when the snowbirds are here, I mean, that's about as bad as it's going to get anyways, is during the winter months from uh, November until about May. Okay, so Kyle Bollander says, I work in Orange County but live in Gilbert. I have witnessed over four accidents in Gilbert just in the last year. Yeah, I mean, it depends on who you, who you ask. I mean, Arizona drivers tend to have a high IQ of driving because they spend so much time driving. But because of that, they're also very confident, very aggressive, and very bold drivers. And when you're going down the freeway, say you're just going down US 60 or 202, I-10 or State Route 51, any one of those freeways, you're going to be coming, you're going to be coming in contact with people who are bobbing and weaving in and out of traffic, sometimes with a, you know, what is it, a, a margin of error of three feet, two feet sometimes. I mean, you'll watch a car going 85 miles an hour down I-17, and he's just he's bobbing in and out of traffic, and you're like, if that car in front of him just pushed the brakes for just one second, that would be a car accident. And every car barreling down the freeway going 65, 70 would be involved in that. So it's, so, you know, you see these crazy drivers and people are like, how's this safe? But it's not just in Phoenix that you have this, but because you spend so much time in the car, driving is one of the most dangerous things you will do every single day. And when it comes to safety, uh, you know, there are some areas of Phoenix that are safer than others. Uh, but for the most part, Phoenix is a pretty safe place outside of central Phoenix. If you're in central Phoenix or north Phoenix and south Phoenix, it gets a little bit iffy. But the Phoenix metro area is pretty safe compared to some of these other places you could be, you could end up. I mean, uh, just saying that that's kind of one of those things. Uh, the high power bills. This is something that I get a question about a lot of times and people are like, you know, how bad are the power bills? How bad is the water bill? I don't think the water bills are very bad, has been very bad. And I've got a lush tropical kind of garden in my backyard with a lot of different plants. But I, I mean, I don't think I've paid more than $45 even in the summer months for water. So uh, if you're worried about water bill, I'd say don't worry about it too much. One thing that I have paid a little bit more for is natural gas. Uh, that was something that I wasn't too, I wasn't expecting to pay a lot for, but I have a jacuzzi. So maybe that's that's why, but I, I've noticed that natural gas tends to be a little bit more expensive, but the electric in the summertime when you're running your AC to stay cool in your house, I mean, that could be pretty expensive and it can also put a toll on your uh, Freon or your uh, air conditioner. Correct me if I'm wrong, but someone in this group may or may not already know this, but didn't they just uh, pass a bill to remove Freon from automobiles? I saw that somewhere. Uh, but from what I heard is they're going to be removing Freon from air conditioning systems, or maybe that's the old way they did air conditioning and they're no longer going to do that. All right. So another thing that people don't really like and people from out of state comment on quite a bit is the terracotta homes, the homes that look all the same. They've got this beige, they've got this brown. Uh, it's like uh, it's it, all the houses look the same. For example, in the neighborhood I live, if you just drive around, they did the community right next door in the subdivision did decide to do blue houses. And the first thing I said was, that's pretty cool. They did blue. It's like a, a royal blue house. I'm, I've never really seen a royal blue house before. But in the neighborhood I live in, you know, you have like a, a light brown, a darker brown, like a gray brown, and then like a red brown. And those are the four, four options. So everything kind of looks the same. And people are like, where's the trees? Where's the, where's the, the originality? Where's the character? And it's just not there. So people get... Uh, kind of turned off by that. They're like, oh man, back where I come from, we have character, we have charisma, everything's the same. But to the positive of that, it's, everything is new. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you're in Boston, for example, I was just talking to my friend, she lives in Boston, and she said that uh, her house is built in 1901. So, because uh, she was thinking about moving to uh, Ahwatukee, and I said, um, I said, oh, you know, the, 
where are you going to move? And she said, into this apartment. I said, when was it built? She said, 1994. I said, 1994. I said, think about how much, I was joking with her, but I said, think about how much sage you're going to have to burn to get rid of all the spirits that were there uh, over from 1994 to 2020, right? I mean, that's what, 16 years almost? Just over under 16 years because we're still in 2019. But so uh, 16 years of residence, maybe that's uh, maybe 10 to 15 to 20 different tenants have lived in that particular unit, not to, not to uh, include her neighbors. So I said, she goes and she goes, well, try 1901. I was like, wow, that's a long time. So you, you live in an apartment complex that was built in 1901. That's a lot of different people that have lived in there. But it's not just the spirits, right? It's dogs, cats, uh, party kids, party people, you know, just things that people have done in there to soil the soil, the wood, soil, the floor, soil, all this and that. I don't know. But being that everything is new, I think that can be a benefit for some people because it's so uh, clean. And a lot of these uh, commercial infrastructure is pretty new, especially out here in the Southeast Valley where I'm at. You know, everything's less than 15 years old, but most of it's really less than five years old. I mean, these roads are brand spanking new. Like they, they're they getting ready to open up a new road. They just, they did rigs. They're doing Meridian. Um, and, and they did the 202 out in Ahwatukee. I mean, you get on these roads. These are, these are roads that are done correctly to modern specs, right? Modern spec, uh, specifications. So that's kind of, that's kind of a good thing. Um, I think, but at the same time, they also build them really cheap. Like I question whether or not this house that I'm in right now will last a hundred years. Like that home in Boston lasts a hundred years because the craftsmanship, the, uh, the attention to detail, it would take what one to build a house back in the fifties or even the seventies. How long did it take to build one of these houses, these track homes, they build them in three months. So, uh, and, and if you think about it, cause I walk around these houses when they're brand new. So I get to see them when they're going from concrete slab to wood, uh, skeleton to uh, drywall insulation all the way to stucco on the outside and then, uh, drywall on the inside. And I think to myself, I'm like, I don't know if that dry, is that drywall meant to last? How long, how long can that stucco last? I suppose the stucco will last a long time, but, uh, Yes, the, the infrastructure is up to date, but the quality of the craftsmanship, is that up to snub? Is that where we want it? I question if it'll last 100 years. So it's something to just weigh. I mean, there's a cut. I, I mentioned a bunch of different things to think about. I don't know. You, you have to see what's important to you. But I mean, you're like, I'm not going to be here for 100 years. I'm not going to be living in this house. So all I need is for this house to be comfortable for the next 25 years. Right. Another thing that... Uh, People have complained about and uh, are kind of concerned about, and 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 that's fine. And, and you know, we'll we'll just go ahead and put it right out there. It's the politics. Uh, you know, we have a Republican governor for the most part. We're a, we've been a Republican state here in Arizona. I mean, if you if you look at the if you look at the numbers, we vote red pretty much the majority of the time. We don't vote blue too often, um, but that means we're conservative. Although that's changing now. The people who are from here are majority conservatives. Okay. Uh, but if you're coming from a place like uh, Los Angeles or, or Seattle or Oregon, or you're coming from the West Coast or even the East Coast where you're just a, a liberal die hard, um, you might be kind of put back by that because you'll be like, oh, wow, I used to be able to get away with everything I wanted to say that was Democrat or liberal. And uh, out here in Arizona, they're like, give me my guns, get the heck off my property. What are you looking at my property for? Whereas back east, you know, some people think they're a little bit more easygoing. It doesn't matter, but be, be aware of that. When you're moving to Phoenix, it's historically been conservative and there is a large population of conservatives. So uh, some people who have the loose tongue, they just say whatever they want uh, because they're in a Democrat friendly uh, place. They might be kind of thrown off guard by that. But it is the, the tide is kind of turning. Uh, I don't know. The, the, the conservatives say it's a bad thing that so many liberals are moving here. The liberals say, well, the conservatives need to modernize and get out of the cave. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just an argument that's ongoing, what, what, no matter what side of the, the fence you're on. Um, so another thing that you have to keep in mind out here, well, we don't really get too many natural disasters, okay? But there are natural disasters that do occur. And, uh, you know, we do get wildfires. That's the big thing. Uh, but, you know, in in uh, Miami, for example, you get earth or, uh, hurricanes uh, in 
Los Angeles, you get the threat of earthquakes. In Oregon and Alaska and Hawaii, you get tsunamis. Um, but the thing out here is wildfires. You get those in California. I mean, California gets, is under threat from everything. If you think about California, they could get a tsunami, right? If Cascadia's, uh, uh, if the Cascadia uh, plate ruptured off the coast of uh, Seattle and um, Portland, what would happen to the water? It would create a tsunami and that water would probably come down to California. Then they also get earthquakes. They also get um, wildfires. So if you're coming from a place like California, you're going to find relief from a lot of natural disasters out here. Um, I guess you could say the two are wildfires and drought, which go hand in hand, but we're not really in a drought. In fact, I'm wearing this because it's cold outside. It's been it's been raining and we've gotten a lot of rain so far this winter. Uh, unseason, I would say it's unseasonably cold and a lot more uh, rain, although it's kind of nice because it'll cool down. Then it just warms back up. But that's kind of another thing to talk about is the weather. So we get real extreme heat, right? Uh, from like late May all the way until early, middle of uh, September, it's really extreme heat. But then we kind of go through this little period where it's just beautiful out for about two months, three months. And then, and then we enter into the winter and in the winter you'll wake up and it's cold. Like today it was kind of cold. I mean, it's not like a tropical place like uh, Hawaii where you just pretty much, you don't get too much heat, but you, you know, you don't get too much cold either. So it's like really moderately temperate. Um, but Phoenix kind of does get pretty cold. It just doesn't get so cold that it snows, but it gets cold enough to kill your tropical plants. Like I've got a couple plants back there that I had to uh, do frost treatment on. If you want, I can make a video on that. But um, I had to treat my plants that are tropicals, like my plumeria flowers. You know, when you go to Hawaii, you get the lei and they give you the flower. That's a plumeria. I plant those in my backyard, but when they're very young, you need to put a, put like a wrapping around it. Same with my papaya and my mango and my banana tree, which didn't make it because of the extreme heat. But that's kind of frustrating if you're if you're a gardener. Rock Nevada says 50, 50, uh, 59 degrees sucks. Yeah, uh, well, 59 degrees is pretty brisk, especially if it's windy. Uh, it really sucks if it's, uh, you know, in the 40s. Um, so that's something to consider. One of the things that I do like about Arizona, and we've said this uh, a few times, is we're only, what, four or five hours away from Los Angeles from Phoenix. We're only about three hours away from Puerto Penasco, four, three to four hours away from Puerto Penasco, Mexico. Uh, we're a short flight to Cabo San Lucas. We're a pretty short flight to Cancun, three hours. I mean, what's three hours? I guess if you include the time spent at airports, maybe four hours. Uh, you know, we're close enough to the to Sedona, which I just, like I said, I went there and I made those videos. If you haven't already seen them, you can see them. Just how beautiful Sedona is. Check this channel. I made some really beautiful, or I got to show you how beautiful Sedona is. I mean, these red rocks are majestic. I've been to some places that are up there in the world, like Yosemite is really nice. Uh, there's a there's some places in the Swiss, Switzerland, like the Swiss Alps are really nice. Uh, I've been to a place in Krabi, Thailand. I've been to Kauai. And I would have to say that when it comes to like extra special places on planet Earth, Sedona is one of them. Yeah, it's just like I said, I mean, Switzerland is up there, like the Swiss Alps and Grindelwald and Ladderbrunnen, uh, those places around Interlaken in the Swiss Alps, even um, where the Matterhorn is, really beautiful. And I would have to say that Sedona has that same kind of appeal on that level. Like, let's just say there's 10 degrees of like amazing scenery. Sedona is there. And then you have, uh, you know, Monument Valley, you have Canyon de Chez, and you have the Grand Canyon. So, I mean, these kind of things are really attractive to people who are adventure seekers. And I think that if you guys fully realize just how many amazing outdoor activities Arizona has, I'm really going to work this next in 2020. I'm going to do a better job of getting out there to these off to these places that are going to show you. You know, not just the Tonto National Bridge, not just uh, Fossil Creek, not just uh, Antelope Canyon, Havasupai Falls, but I'm going to show you some of these really hidden gems that are going to make you say, wow, Arizona is special, okay? And this coming from a guy who lived four years in uh, Hawaii, and that's, I mean, Hawaii is on, you know, the, the, the couple places in the world that are really special, just in case you want to know, I would say Krabi, Thailand, okay? A lot of people don't even realize Krabi, Thailand is really nice. Remember, I have another channel, Island Hopper TV. So I know about these cool places. The Swiss Alps, uh, I mean, the Swiss Alps are amazing. Kauai, 
in the Big Island. I think Kauai and the Big Island are better than Maui and Oahu. And then uh, Sedona. So, I mean, you could put Sedona in that kind of league. Another place that uh, comes up for me is Rio de Janeiro, um, which exceeded my expectations even when I went down there. And then you have like Patagonia. Uh, so there's some really cool things. But to know that, Fina, or that Arizona, Sedona, Arizona is one of those really special places on planet Earth, like up there with Tibet, you know, Tibet's one of those places too. It's comforting. It's nice to know. It's just you don't want it to get too uh, overpopulated. That's the thing that scares me about Sedona is that it is so amazing that it could get overpopulated. But they've done a really good job of keeping it small. Uh, it's only got about, what, ten to 12,000 people that live there. And they've done a really good job of keeping it small, I guess, because it's so expensive. But, um, wow, you'd have to see those videos. I mean, just look at the drone shots that I got where you can see it from the air. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, fit before gold says, have you ever been to Rio Verde? A friend just bought a home there. Yeah, I've been to Rio Verde. Rio, Rio Verde's, uh, on the, the Verde river. Right. And, uh, it's just past, you have to take dynamite and you go all the way down to dynamite. And then, uh, you'll from probably true North all the way to dynamite. You'll see you, there's nothing really on the left or the right side of the road. In particular, the right side of the road doesn't have much. I think it's part of the uh, Indian reservation. But when you get to the end of Dynamite, you come to this really small, older community. It's probably built in the 70s or the 80s. It's got a golf course, and they built homes around there. It's kind of small. It's called Rio Verde. And uh, Rio Verde is beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. Um, Linda G says, I think that Arizona manages forests better than California does. Yeah, probably. I mean, California gets a lot of tourists from all over the world. I mean, you go to Yosemite National Park, for example, I mean, there's tourists. It's not just American tourists there. You've got European tourists there and you've got Japanese tourists and now Chinese tourists. And, you know, Asia has a lot of people just to begin with. So you you you, you add in uh, Japanese tourists and uh, Chinese tourists. You know, China's got, what, 1.3 billion people, even if like less than 0.5 percent of the people go to Yosemite. That's a lot of people. That doesn't even include all the Americans trying to go there. So Yosemite sometimes in California can be really ridiculous with uh, overpopulation in that valley area. Grand Canyon kind of gets it. I mean, they can't even, in order to go down to the bottom of Grand Canyon where have a Supai Falls is, that's that water that's kind of blue, like a really unique blue. They have have a Supai Falls. There's a couple of them down there, a couple of these waterfalls, but you can't go inside there uh, without a permit nowadays because overpopulation. So, Overpopulation is kind of a big thing. And thankfully, Sedona hasn't quite got there yet, but they are doing some construction over there. I, I said when I went down to Sedona, they just need to build in the uptown area. They need to build like a, a parking garage because they're, they need the, the parking situation in Sedona is a little bit ridiculous. And uh, as Sedona continues to get more and more popul popular and people realize that there's this place that lists that exists. It's this little slice of heaven on earth in Arizona. Um, yeah. A parking garage is what they need. Have you ever been to Bullhead City, Laughlin area? I've been there and it's somewhat a touristy spot now, maybe. Well, Laughlin has always been one of those places. I mean, Laughlin for Arizona has always been like the, the alternative to Las Vegas. If, if everyone who wanted to go to Vegas would also say, but go to Laughlin. Laughlin is the place where the poker players go, you know, um, but then it kind of cooled down a little bit in the early, in the early 2000s. And uh, I would say, in fact, if you want to really talk about when Vegas had its heyday, the 90s, in my opinion, Vegas had its heyday in the 90s. That was when they built Luxor. That was when they built the MGM. I, me I remember going there and they built the Stratosphere then. Uh they haven't they've built a couple different areas around Vegas, but Vegas, in my opinion, really experienced an expansion of the strip in the 90s. And then it kind of slowed down, especially as the economy went in the in, in Vegas lost its way from 2007, probably to 2012, 2014. And so same kind of thing happened to Laughlin. Laughlin was hip, but now it's coming back. So Vegas is starting to come back. They're starting, you know. It used to be the only pit in Vegas was Circus Circus in the in the 90s. If you stayed at Circus Circus, you were staying in the, like the worst part of uh, Vegas. Nowadays, like Excalibur and Circus Circus, like I don't even know. Do they still have Circus Circus? But uh, 
Excalibur is like on that level where it's kind of like, oh, I don't know how much longer Excalibur is going to be around because it's it's high rent district and uh, it's not a very, it's kind of a uh, dangy, right? But Laughlin is one of those places that, yeah, it's nice. And then if you go across the river where all the people live, it's Bullhead City. And you're like, wow, this is a really beautiful area. But the problem with Bullhead City is the same uh as Kingman is the heroin and the meth. I mean, it's a problem. You can't get, I, I know that people don't want to hear that. And uh, you know, it's the truth. Uh, there's just too many people that are on drugs there. And, and a lot of it is because the, the economy is not very good. A lot of welfare uh, recipients there. I mean, when the economy hit, when the economy went down, down South, a lot of people became dependent on the, uh, the welfare system, whether it be, be food stamps. And that's what ended up happening was people became uh they became homeless and then they were unable to really recover. So it's like they got into the habit of being homeless. A couple of years goes by, you know, where they're on government dependency. They and, and to cope with that, you know, they get onto drugs. Some of them just do alcohol. And then some of them eventually advance into meth and uh, heroin just to, you know, get by and make, make the situation manageable. And then they kind of just, after a few years of that, they just get to the point where they're, no longer capable or really able to function in society. So they need real serious rehabilitation. But Bullhead City is one of those places that uh, has potential, but it's a lot, the majority of its population uh, is really into drugs. Sorry. Don't, you know, I'm not sorry. I'm just saying, like, if, if that upsets you that I said that, said that, that's my personal feelings. Status unknown. Best place to live in Arizona for a 32-year-old male single, Tempe, Scottsdale. Rock Nevada says, Circus Circus just sold to Phil Ruffin. I don't know who Phil Ruffin is, but what are they going to do with Circus Circus? I, as a kid, I always was excited to go to Circus Circus. I was like, yeah, I want to stay at Circus Circus because, you know, Circus Circus has all those, uh, like, arcade kind of areas or, like, where you play the games. It's kind of like a, a – it's, it's like a carnival – uh, or a fair turned into a uh, hotel. It's kind of got a good theme to it, but the hotels are kind of dangy and all that. Uh, Kathy says, you can't blab about politics in LA anymore. I came from there and love it here. Don't brag about Cali. Get your AZ plates quick. You'll fit in. Oh, that's a good point, Kathy. Uh, you know, Kathy's, she's, she's giving you fair advice. She's giving you a healthy, hearty advice. If you're coming from California, um, you know, because unfortunately people are going to hold that. I don't, per me personally, I, I don't care where you're coming from. Okay. If you're coming from uh, back East or if you're coming from China or India or Somalia or California or Mexico or Boston or Chicago, I don't really care. But apparently there's people out there that do. Okay. So the more you can fit in, you know, get your Arizona license as, as soon as possible, get your Arizona plates as soon as possible. Try not to mention that, uh, well, back in L.A., we used to do it like this too many times to locals. No one's going to know. No one's going to start stuff with you. No one's going to say anything. No one's going to be rude. So Kathy just gave you some really good advice. Uh, at, okay. Doche bag. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to. You guys know. <laughs> He's right there. Best job to have in Arizona. Okay, best job to have in Arizona is probably, oh, wow, man. It depends. Like, how qualified for education are you? Uh, all the Uber drivers that I spoke to in Arizona, most of the Uber drivers that I spoke to in Arizona outside of Scottsdale don't really like it. Uh, you know, if you go into Boston, the only type of complaints you'll hear from Uber drivers is, oh, the traffic sucks in downtown Boston, but for the most part, they're happy. You know, you're in Florida. People don't really mind the, 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 the job of Uber there. But in Arizona, it kind of can be a little bit of a drag because it's so spread out when you're driving an Uber. But Uber, Uber is like a, a nice supplement income or even a full-time income. But I just mentioned that because sometimes people are always like, what can I do when I get there? Well, you could drive for DoorDash. You could drive for Uber Eats. You could drive for Uber. That's just a supplemental income for whatever income you have. But um, any job that allows you to do that and then you know make a, make a YouTube channel – I was just doing some research on uh, um, best YouTube channels to have. I have a couple YouTube channels. You know, I have Island Hopper TV. I have this one. I have a DIY channel and uh, whatnot. And I also manage a couple for other brands. 
uh, social media presence, their digital marketing uh, strategies. But um, there's, I did some research yesterday, top 10 niche trends for 2020. And it was everything from uh, life coaches to um, like, none of it was like local uh, real estate or local uh, advice like this channel. Like this is not one of the top 10 niches, but um, it was coaches, life coaches. Um, Another thing is mental health coaches, uh, people who give advice about how to overcome depression and anxiety. Believe it or not, that's uh, one of the most searched freight terms on, uh, on the internet, on YouTube is people trying to seek advice on from not because the doctors aren't healing people of uh, their anxiety and their depression and all the things that they're dealing with. So they're turning to YouTube to see if they can find hope from people who've overcome their depression and anxiety and people who share that story, their testament, their testimony, those, those kind of channels for self-help uh, are pretty popular. So, you know, that's a supplemental income that, you know, you make a video like this or a video like that or whatever, uh, workout videos. People are into like uh, exercise. There's like these new trends too. And, and then there's like health food. So I just found out keto, uh, ketosis, ketogenic diet, just passed vegan diet as like one of the most trendy new age diets. You know, it used to be paleo. Then it was like uh, in the 90s, I remember 1-800-94-Jenny. And then like it'd be 95-Jenny, 96-Jenny, 97-Jenny. You know, everyone was into aerobics and stuff. Now they're into yoga. So things change. Remember back in the 90s and 80s when, every, when they had those knee-high socks? And everyone would be doing aerobics with uh, Richard Simmons and stuff. Nowadays, it's the yoga thing. But that's starting to fade out because a lot of people are getting turned off by yoga. Uh, like the hot yoga thing was really popular in 2014, but people are starting to get out of that. So like, but people always want to get into this, like, what are they doing for activities kind of stuff? And travel is really big, which is one of the ones I work in, but it's really saturated. But um, eco travel, like what's the next level? Another thing that's really popular is minimalism, minimalist. So if you're a minimalist, you could open up a channel. Here's another one, living in vans. Some of the most popular YouTube channels uh, right now are people who are living in vans. Like there's this one guy, he 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 lives in uh, Yellowknife, like up in, by the Kodiak of Alaska. And he has this little white like Honda van and uh, he's turned it into his house. He's got like a grill in there. And, when, and it, so it's really cold in Yellowknife. I mean, it's like, you know, it's below freezing, below zero. And he sits, he sits there in the, um, in the van and he like talks about his life living in the van. He's got like 4.5 million views in three weeks. Uh, so people who live in vans, minimalist, that's a big thing. Decluttering. Uh, these are niches that you can go into to make YouTube videos. Okay. I'm only telling you about those because that's ways to like whatever your job is that pays you $20 an hour and it's just not enough. You can do these supplemental income. So that's the way I'm looking at it is like what jobs going to allow you to do a supplemental income, like have your side Uber business or side um, business doing Airbnb or something like that or, you know, a YouTube channel or whatever it is that you're doing on the side for your side hustle that you hope to eventually grow into your own personal business. Because they say the world is changing. You know, we're going more into uh, AI, artificial intelligence and augmented reality. I mean, even there was an interview with uh, Glenn Beck, where if Glenn Beck, you know, Glenn Beck's like the the conservative uh, uh, go to guy for most conservatives back in like 2008. But now he's got his own thing and he still does interviews. But if Glenn Beck is privy to this reality, the fact that augmented reality and artificial intelligence and all that virtual reality stuff is going to displace a lot of people in jobs. So my advice to people is always Where's the future? What is the future of the internet? The reason I started learning the internet was back when I was in the military, I was getting ready to get out. I was kind of scared because the economy was not so good in 2011. And uh, I was like, wow, man, I need, a, I need something that's gonna be secure because I, at 30 years old, I didn't wanna keep starting over at 40 and 45. So I was like, where's the future? And I all, all I needed to hear was that the top five companies in America, Amazon, Facebook, Google, uh, Microsoft, Apple, those five companies were all dealing with technology related to the internet. So I said, well, I need to learn the internet. I need to learn something about the internet. Now that doesn't mean that there's not still going to be jobs that are necessary for like landscaping and service jobs. There's still going to be that, 
but you need to, you, if you're going to go into one of those jobs, you need to be going into one that's going to be competitive 10 years from now, not something that's fading out. Like coal, if you're trying to be a coal miner or a copper miner, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're still going to be needing to mine things like lithium batteries don't just grow themselves. They have to go mine it, but some, some of the technologies are, you know, they're going to fade out. So try to get into an industry that's going to be of the future. Uh, thir uh, third Power Prod says cryptocurrencies. Uh, douchebags. <laughs> oh, man, you got to change your name if you're going to give me a sh if I'm going to give you a shout out. Um, but he says invest in cryptocurrencies. Uh, actually, a lot of you guys are saying invest in cryptocurrencies. Uh, what's up, Third Power Prod, man? Uh, Michelle Vogue says hit the like button for Jeff. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Status unknown. Is Paradise Valley Village separate from Paradise Valley itself? Paradise Valley is the area just north of the Paradise Valley Village might be like a neighborhood in Paradise Valley, right? But Paradise Valley in and of itself is north of Camelback Mountain. And then you have uh, like this valley. It literally looks like a valley. You have like these hills that uh, are just off to the side on the uh, you know on the right if you're looking north. And you can see it. I mean, it's basically just go down Tatum Boulevard. Once you get to like um, Shea Boulevard, just south of Tatum, or, or take take a, take Tatum Boulevard south from Shea Boulevard all the way down until you get to like Lincoln. Or, yeah, something like that. Tom, Thomas, maybe. Uh, but that whole area is Paradise Valley. And it's, it's expensive. It's big dollar homes. If you can live in Paradise Valley, more power to you because that's great. I mean, if you found a place you can rent down there, heck yeah. Um, Chuck Miller, if we cannot be grown, it must be mined all the way with Bitcoin. Yeah, well, you guys are speaking my language. I mean, you know me, I like Bitcoin, um, not just because uh, a lot of the smartest people on earth are saying that <laughs> Bitcoin is, the, you know, there's a guy by the name of Peter Thiel. Uh, Peter Thiel is, you know, he's he's got his hands... If you look at the story of Peter Thiel, he's written a book, but um, I'll give you his name, Peter, T-H-I-E-L. Look him up. But when he was asked on a TED Talk or like one of these symposium talks, what was the most uh, uh, impressive th technologies that are coming up? He, he could have said AI. He could have said artificial intelligence. He's, he could have said robots that turn into humans. He could have said anything. But you know what he said? Bitcoin. So, I mean... Peter Thiel, with, his, with the history that he has being involved in a lot of startups like PayPal, Facebook, and some of these other corporations that he's been a part of, that he's been an angel investor in, for him to say that Bitcoin was the most powerful technology that's coming up, it's something to think about. So um, a lot of people, they're suspicious of Bitcoin because they're like, this is weird money. This is just like they were suspicious of the Internet when it first came out, you know? Uh, they were like, well, I don't know if I trust this Internet thing. Well, they say the same thing. I don't know if I trust this Bitcoin thing. But the more you start to dive into Bitcoin and you realize that all it is is essentially a technology upgrade of the financial system, you start to see where the real power in something like that comes around. So uh, I'm not saying sell all your gold and go get Bitcoin, but even Glenn Beck, you know, because Glenn Beck was a big gold bug for the longest time. He's a Bitcoin cryptocurrency guy, too. So seeing you guys talking about cryptocurrency uh, also, it's interesting. But the big the big thing there is crypto or uh, with cryptocurrency is the technology called blockchain. And the reason that blockchain is really impressive, uh, if I could let me try to explain blockchain in like a minute. But basically blockchain. It's encryption. So you ever seen an encrypted code? Uh, that's where it gets its name, crypto, in crypto, encryption. So encrypted code, it's like X, J, 4, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it forms a line of code, an encrypted line of code, which means something. So for example, you're, um, you buy something at Macy's and that, dig that receipt or that data is stored. It'll say, uh, with that, you bought five, sh five shoes, one belt, two pairs of pants. They put they take that transaction details and they put it into an encrypted code. That encrypted code, if you open up that encrypted code, will reveal to you the receipt details. OK, so that is one line of encrypted data. But what they do is they take one line and then they make then they make a block out of it 
and that forms the block. And then they create that a chain. The reason they do that is because it's impenetrable. It's hard to hack. Right now, the current system that we have is hackable. That's why you have uh, Target getting hacked. You have the Chinese even hacking the Pentagon to get the, the, um, the details on how to build the JSF, the Joint Strike Fighter, right? So if you look at China, they have, they have the, the F-35, the, J, uh, the Joint Strike Fighter, they have that. The exact same thing because they hacked the Pentagon. Even the U.S. government's getting hacked. So blockchain is there to stop hackers from getting into things like financial data. Okay, so Bitcoin is a technology that is based on on blockchain, which means it's using an unhackable uh, encryption. Now, the only the only problem is Google and some of these other companies are getting into what is called quantum computing. Quantum computers are powerful computers that they're they're worried could potentially even hack something like in, in encrypted codes, like a blockchain. But compared to what we have now, quantum computers will just destroy the infrastructure we have now. So they need to upgrade the technology. So the fiat technology that they're using for fiat currency, it's a problem because people are going to have their, their financial data on these systems. Just imagine if if some hacker was actually able to like disrupt the whole financial system, that means all the money that you have in there, whether it be $50,000, $50 or $500,000, they were able to either wipe it or steal it. That's the, that's the reason why you need a financial technology upgrade like uh, to cryptocurrency and then cryptocurrency. I hope that makes sense. Um, Paradise Valley versus Fountain Hills versus Ahwatukee Foothills is which is better. Okay. Fountain Hills, way out there, more rural, big dollars. You need big dollars to live in Fountain Hills, but it's uh, it's rural living with big houses in the desert. Paradise Valley is big dollar living, probably the most expensive, but it's centralized. It's right in the heart of the city of Phoenix. So you're close to everything. I mean, it's really the heart of Phoenix. So you're living in this beautiful community on Camelback Mountain and um, just that whole area, but it's it's in the heart of it all. But you get these big homes that are kind of rural, but not really because it's just like in this like its own little oasis. Ahwatukee Foothills is the poor man's. It's not poor. OK, I'm just saying it's the poor man's because that's a, a word that you would use. Uh, Scottsdale or, or Paradise Valley. So, you know, for me, because I don't have millions of dollars just sitting around to go buy a Paradise Valley mansion or a Fountain Hills uh, enclave. I'm looking at Ahwatukee Foothills. That's the way I look at it. Ahwatukee is not the only place that has a uh, nice kind of living like that. You can get that out in Vistancia up in uh, Peoria, way up north. You can get uh, the poor man Scottsdale. Uh, you can get the poor man Scottsdale in uh, North Mesa, Northeast Mesa. Gold Canyon uh, is a poor man Scottsdale. Thoughts on Gold Canyon? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's nice. Thank you to the 52 people who crushed up the likes. Mark Mandela says, I wanted to buy Bitcoin when it was $600. It was too confusing. Yeah, I mean, the first time I ever looked at Bitcoin, it was $200. I was working with a, a guy who was in uh, New Zealand and he was do he was building a website for me. And we were having, we had a problem. We were trying to figure out how to send him money without fees. And he was like, uh, can you just send me Bitcoin? And I was like, no, I don't know how to use Bitcoin. I don't trust it. You know, I, I don't know what this is. This is the first time I'd ever heard of Bitcoin. The first time I ever heard of Bitcoin, I was very suspicious of it. Um, and, uh, you know, this is back in like 2014, right? Or some sometime around then. And then uh, he was like, no, no, check it out. So I was like, OK, he convinced me that it was that it works and that it was real money and that, it, that he wanted to be paid in it. And I was like, OK, how do I do it? So he sent me over this website called uh, Buy Bitcoin's uh, something like that. Uh, it was over the counter. They call it OTC, right? OTC Bitcoins. Uh, but it was like buybitcoins.com. And so you buy it off someone and through an auction, it was $250 at the time. And uh, I didn't, I, I couldn't figure it out. I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. I was like, I didn't understand it. So I was like, tell you what, I'll just send you the money on the PayPal and I'll, I'll, t I'll take the fees. I'll eat the fees. And uh, he was like, you don't have to do that. And in fact, you should buy some Bitcoin for yourself. I was like, no, no, I don't need any of this Bitcoin. OK, I don't need any of it. Well, then one day, oh, Bitcoin's at a thousand. I'm like, what? 
Bitcoin's at a thousand. I should have bought a bunch of those when it was at two fifty. Okay, so then Bitcoin goes to a thousand. Then I'm like, uh, I'll just wait for it to go back down. Well, it never went back down, and then uh, it starts to go up. It, it goes up to like three thousand. Then I start getting real serious about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency around that time. But the first time I ever bought Bitcoin was at six hundred dollars. But I bought it for mining, so I didn't. It just went into a mining pool. Um, which I haven't even made my full Bitcoin back on that. So don't do mining. Anyone who talks you into Bitcoin mining, don't do it. Um, but uh, started getting real serious at 3,000, watched it go up to 20,000, watched it come down. So it is a volatile market. But as with anything, if you're going to get into cryptocurrency, don't make the mistake that most newbies make with any investment. It's like buying a house when the market's really high. You buy low and you sell when it goes really high. You don't buy when it's really high and then you wait for it to go down to sell. So if you buy high, you got to be able to ride the wave when it goes back down. OK, <laughs> it's like surfing. You got to catch the wave of Piahi in Maui at Jaws or in at Bonsai Pipeline. That means that wave is going to throw you all the way back out there. and You're going to have to pedal back out there to get back out to Waimea Bay and get on that wave. That's kind of like Bitcoin. It goes it goes in waves. So you want to buy when the when when it's easy, when it's low. Because when it goes back up, you don't want to buy when it's high. And that's what ends up happening. And that's where people get hurt is they buy high, sell low. You're supposed to buy low, sell high. It, I know it sounds pretty obvious in theory, but even people who know the philosophy or the theory about how to invest still buy high and sell low. I know people who bought Bitcoin at 14000 They waited. They wrote it all the way down to 6000 They sold. And then when Bitcoin went back up to 2500 they were like, Damn it. Why did I sell? I was like, I don't know, dude. Are you that impatient? Did you need the money that bad right now? So that's the thing with the cryptocurrency investment. It's volatile. Today, the price of Bitcoin is 75.30. Yeah, I mean, I'm not giving any advice as to whether or not I think it's a good time to buy because I'm over that stuff now. But you guys can make their own decision uh, about that. But I like Bitcoin. So that's all I'll say. Jay Plata. Um, eight dynamics. Okay. Is Oak Creek waterfront real estate more sought after, more expensive than Sedona because of the creek water? Well, they say it's always good to build and buy on a creek or a river. They say that's really good property. I mean, it's like oceanfront property, but waterfront property. So anytime you're able to do that in an area. Okay. Are we talking short term or long term? Uh, because, you know, those are factors. I personally like Oak Creek Village. Uh, like I, I and for those of you who want to know about Oak Creek Village, go watch my other video on Sedona virtual, the one that says Sedona virtual tour, the driving tour. Go watch that one. We start out in Oak Creek Village. Oak Creek Village is about five to 10 minutes south of Sedona. No, maybe 15 minutes south of Sedona, the, the city of Sedona. But I think it's all Sedona metropolitan area. But um, yeah, I mean, Sedona, uh, Oak Creek, Oak Creek Village is... Uh, I think long term, that's a pretty darn good place to be. I mean, I would just live there just for the sake of living there. Forget the investment opportunity. That's a place to live. Oak Creek Village. Um, Rock Nevada, investment 101, buy low, sell high. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's what everyone says. I even say that to myself. When the Don't get me wrong. When the market's going down, I'm sitting here holding on to my chair like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. And then it just keeps going down. And sometimes those those recessions, those decline in prices can last six months to a year. So that's six months to a year just wondering where's the bottom of this market. And then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be like, we got to be getting close. And the first thing that will go in your head is, I know I should be buying right now, but I don't know where the bottom of this is. So I'm going to sit it out. But the people who make the most money, the, the people with the most guts and glory and all that, the brave ones, they buy when it goes down like that. Um, It's the luck of the draw or it takes a genius, intelligence, who knows? Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin, I've seen Bitcoin price change $2,000 in, um, in a day. What I'm saying is I've seen it, I've seen it swing like that. Was it 1000 or $2,000? i have seen it go up $1,000 in a day. I know that. But I, I thought I've seen it swing to where it went up and then it went down. And that was like a $2,000 swing. I can't remember exactly, but I felt like it was a $2,000 swing in price. So it could go, it could go from 6,000 to 7,000 in a day. It could go from 6,000 to 10,000 in a day. It hasn't yet, but it could, it could go from 6,000 to 10,000 in two weeks. That's a pretty big, 
I mean, you're not going to get that with um, property. It's like, hmm, should I, am I, me personally, I'm sitting there thinking, should I go buy 40 acres up in Heber Overgard or Straw Barrier Pine, right? For $40,000, 40 acres for $40,000. Some of these places you can do that in Arizona. That land, how long is it going to take for that to mature? Or do I go take $40,000, put it all into Bitcoin and, um, you know, in the next couple of years, watch my money triple, quadruple or go to zero. It's like with the real estate, the odds of it going to zero are basically not ever going to happen. Right. But the odds of Bitcoin going to zero, there is that small fraction of chance that it could. Uh, but it's got a lot more upside if uh, if if we're all correct and why we ended up getting into there. So that's something to think about. Uh, as far as Oak Creek goes, Oak Creek is great, says Chuck Miller. Oak Creek is great. I mean, Oak Creek, Oak Creek, you're talking about Oak Creek Village, but Oak Creek is a long creek. Like it goes all the way up into Oak Creek Canyon, um, which is on the way to uh, um, Flagstaff. Rock Nevada says constant finger on the cryptocurrency pulse. Yeah, I mean, that's it's kind of where we got to be is like and sometimes I don't like I maybe check it probably once a day. Obviously, when it's moving up, I'm checking it more. When it's moving down, I'm trying not to look at it. But when it's moving, I'm looking at Bitcoin price all the time. <laughs> but no one knows. I mean, even the Winklevoss twins, you know, who are probably the, have the biggest stake in cryptocurrency with, uh, you know, they're like one of the founding uh, people of Bitcoin. Um, I follow them on Twitter. They don't even know. Uh, Andropolis, he, he hardly even knows. I mean, the people in the know, no one really knows. I mean, it's a financial market. Uh that can go any which way because it's a global, it's a global financial market. You've got Korea involved. You've got Japan. There's been times when Korea pumped the market. So Ch Korea's government says, okay, you guys can now buy Bitcoin. What's going to happen is a bunch of Koreans are going to move in with a lot of money, try to get involved. And then uh, that's going to pump the market. And then everyone's going to get excited. And then for some reason, the Korean government's going to say, well, we got to, we got to, uh, we got to limit this and regulate it. And then the market goes back down. So, I mean, uh, but, you, you know, you're dealing with foreign governments, India, China, Korea, Japan, uh, the whole European Union, the United States, South America. All those things can play a big thing. But all it takes is like one piece of news for like China to say, all right, we're going to let our citizens buy Bitcoin now. And you're you're sitting in there. You, it's been running flat for a little while. Wow. It can happen just like that. I mean, you, you, I don't know. Like, that's the thing. I'm, I'm a speculator. I mean, some would say investing in cryptocurrency is an investment. It's speculating because you have investing, speculating, and then gambling. Is, is cryptocurrency gambling? Is it speculating or is it investing? Depends on who you ask. For me, I call it speculating. So uh, when you're investing, you know, you get slower, slower growth, but more, more likelihood that it'll eventually go up. If you're a billionaire and you've, you're making 5% over time, that's pretty good because you're making 5% of $5 billion. It's a lot of money. If you're making 5% of $5,000, that's not really too exciting, right? It's like, like, you know, so it's, it's kind of one of those things. John McAfee is a big crypto nut, says Chuck Miller. You're, yeah, he is. John McAfee is an interesting character. That is one interesting guy. That guy is, he's on a whole other level. Uh, and I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but uh, he's interesting. And I, I, I keep up with John because he is uh, he's there. He's in the game. Um, whatever your opinion is on whatever crimes he's committed, I don't know. But, you know, I wasn't there. So I'm not going to I'm just going to say, hey, he's in the game. Um, Ken, 2097. What neighborhood or cities do you prefer over the bad areas? Maricopa, Ahwatukee, Tempe, Union Hills, Queen Creek or other area that is not like Apache Junction and more like Chandler. Wow, 54 people crushed up the likes, guys. Thank you. Um, what neighborhood do you prefer over the bad areas? Maricopa, Ahwatukee, Tempe, Union Hills, Queen Creek. I like Ahwatukee. I like Queen Creek. Um, Union Hills, like what? Union Hills North, like Desert Ridge or Happy Valley? If you're going... Union Hills, Happy Valley, and Desert Ridge are nice areas. Uh, if you're talking Tempe, I would take Ahwatukee over Tempe. Uh, if you're talking Chandler, uh, 
it's good. Chandler is just pretty. It's 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 fair. It's nice. Chandler, nothing wrong with Chandler. Uh, D bag says, "Do you like Robert Kiyosaki? He lives in Paradise Valley." Yeah, I've I've, I've read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, or I listened to the audio book by Robert Kiyosaki. I listen to probably a few of his podcasts every year. Uh, so yeah, I know about Robert Kiyosaki. Um, it's funny because he was a go he was a Bitcoin guy. He starts he, like a year ago. He was really excited about Bitcoin. And now all of a sudden he was like, oh, I stay out of Bitcoin because it's for the young guys. I don't quite understand it. But a year ago in one of his podcasts, he was all about Bitcoin. Now he's saying he, he stays out of it, you know, and kind of like what happened there? You know, like how you go from being excited, recommending it to like, well, maybe, you know, maybe you had to change your mind. You can change your mind on what you think is a good investment, you know. But um, yeah, of course, I, I know about Robert Kiyosaki. Actually, he uh, he grew up in Hilo. So when I was on the Big Island, he was one of he's like one of the Hilo Hawaii's, um, you know, pride and joy. He's like the big guy from Hilo, him and BJ Penn. Um. Sonic Bites. Markets will do well in 2020 before the election, but Bitcoin will take a dive, but come back later. Bitcoin, not good for long term investment, but quick trading. OK, I mean, yeah, I mean, some people would say they're long on Bitcoin, like they think that Bitcoin's going to be something in 10 years. Check back in 10 years. Where's the price of Bitcoin? Then there's some people who say, well, just swing trade. You're talking about swing trading. You're saying trade it when it goes down and trade it when it goes up, you know, swing trade that short term. So it depends on who you ask. I mean, and, and obviously you have enough uh, research and experience in the market to make those conclusions. Just be, I'm, I'm more long on Bitcoin. Like I'm more of like, this is a financial technology upgrade. So I see the utility in that aspect. D-Bag says he owns a silver mine. Yeah. Okay. See, so um, silver, I do like silver. I, I, I would, yeah, maybe it's because it's easier to get my hands on um, silver than it is gold. Like when I was getting into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I always used to go for the altcoins at first. Because once I had my one full Bitcoin, I was like, okay, I'm going to go for altcoins because they're easier to get my hands on. Like, like so I became a real big Ethereum and Litecoin kind of guy. Uh, well, more Ethereum. Uh, and then I like, and then because Ethereum was based on altcoins and, uh, you know, dApps and decentralized applications, I was, I was seeing, because it was harder to get your hands on a, a ten to $15,000 Bitcoin in 2017. But now I'm more into Bitcoin. So I, I, I might, I've, I've kind of been like that with silver. I've always liked silver more than gold because it's a thousand dollars to get your hands on one gold coin and this and that. Um, but ultimately, I think gold is like the Bitcoin standard. It's the gold standard. Silver, I don't know. Is silver always going to be a, a, a value? Maybe lithium or some other um, precious metal could come up. Uh, but gold seems to always be the precious metal of choice. Mike says, I want to move from Oklahoma City to Arizona for better weather. Peoria, Anthem, Chandler, and Gilbert, which has the best weather? They all have good weather. You might like Anthem. Uh, you might like Anthem. I mean, although you, you, you've got, you just, the four cities that you named are pretty good. Uh, North Peoria is good, uh, but the worst one on there would be North Peoria, or would be Peoria. So of those four that you listed, uh, Peoria is the one that I would say is at the bottom. Uh, the top would probably be Gilbert or Anthem. It depends. Like Gilbert's closer to, has more things to do. But if you like serenity and peaceful living with the family, you're going to choose Anthem. Chandler is kind of like um, just a little bit less than Gilbert. So if you had to choose between Chandler and Gilbert, the benefit of being in Chandler is it's closer to central Phoenix, but it's older. Gilbert's more new and sophisticated and got a better downtown. So it's kind of like one of those things. Uh, Rock Nevada says he's going long. I think you're talking about go long with uh, Bitcoin. Chuck Miller, guns and ammo are currency. Yes, Chuck. And I have I have plenty of bullets. I got 30 odd six rounds. I got 22 rounds. I got um, slugs. I got buckshot, you know, because... I've had those for like 15 years because I was always like, well, if SHIT ever hit the fan, uh, the currency of the time is going to be who's got the gun, who's got the bullets. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, the guns, are the guns going to be the currency or is it going to be the rounds? Because so I, I, I chose the, the low hanging fruit. I went with the, the currency being the ammo. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Led Zed says platinum is pretty high up there too. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, platinum. I mean, when, when you're going platinum, that's better than going gold record, right? You got the platinum record. You got the gold record of the platinum. So, but they don't really talk about uh, platinum as an investment opportunity. Status unknown. What's Camelback East like? Camelback East. Okay, you're talking like towards Scottsdale Road. Uh, that's more like Arcadia. I would say that's more like Arcadia area or like East Arcadia, south of Camelback is going to be um, Arcadia also, but it's high rent district. So on the other side of Camelback Mountain is Arcadia. The other side going north is Paradise Valley. Cam Camelback East is expensive. Camelback West is like Biltmore. So it's all expensive. It's all nice. It's all good. It's all within the, the, the radius of five miles. So it's all the same except for maybe the price might vary in, in different directions. Mr. Loco says, Aloha, we are trying to move to Arizona from Maui. Where do you think would be good place to live? Not too expensive and lower crime. Thank you for your help. Uh, okay. So I'm assuming you're talking about Phoenix, right? So Phoenix, we're talking uh, Gilbert, put Gilbert on there, Chandler. I mean, uh, who was it? Mike, Mike Jakira. He, he, he hit it on the head. I mean, he, the, the, the four that he said, Peoria, Anthem, Chandler, Gilbert, I would add Awatuki in there. And then Scottsdale or Fountain Hills are nice. Cave Creek, Queen Creek is pretty good. Queen, Queen Creek is like an up and coming uh, area. It's like in 20 years, it's going to be really something special and pr uh, pretty nice, but it's going to take 20 years to get there. If you need it now, go to Gilbert. But you can say, uh, hey, turn this guy off. All right. Um, thanks, Jeff. You've been very informative. Thanks, guys. Um, D-Bag says, I live in Arrowhead, Glendale. Okay, yeah, Arrowhead is Glendale. I said it's Peoria, uh, but uh, it is technically Glendale for sure. Camelback and 83rd equals danger. Camelback road and 83rd street is that isn't that um the salt river uh indian reservation thanks to the 59 people who crushed up the likes we've been going for over an hour should we keep going or what all right um anyway guys so thanks for watching and we will see you guys next time check out those videos uh join our group Living in living in Phoenix Metro, uh, it's different. It's we still have living in Arizona, but we have Phoenix Metro for the people who just want to focus on Phoenix because you know Arizona is a lot more than just Phoenix. So we have that specific group for people who just care about Phoenix. I put that. I'll put that in the link below, and we'll see you guys next time. And thank you to sixty people who crushed up the likes. And uh, I got a couple other videos coming out. I'm going to do some Arizona road trips and stuff like that. So we'll see you guys.